good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm going to go from these, these kind of far kind of broader macro kind of global looks into something that, according to the previous speaker, is perhaps a rare event in terms of actually looking uh, a little more deeply um, at the kind of... Oh, sorry. I don't have to repeat all that, do I? I'm sure. No, I didn't notice it. Yeah. Um, so to to, uh, to 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 look at um, what's happening at the kind of the the very southern tip of Africa, um, seriously sub-Saharan, um, in terms of perhaps something characterised as being rare in terms of actually looking at internally at at at, um, at tax administration data in kinds of various bits of research. So. I'm going to touch on kind of sort of zooming into our administrative data, um, giving a little example of how as you kind of dig deeper, you kind of see a few more things. I'm going to talk a little bit about a project um, in which you and you wider is involved in terms of um, uh, uh, piloting the use of, of anonymized uh, tax data in um, firm level research. And I probably won't get time to, the th to get to the third point. Um, so just to kind of give you a, a very sort of, you know, kind of sketch sketch the picture in South Africa, the big picture here, you have um, what our revenue is uh, and um, as a percentage of um, GDP. So to kind of link to the previous discussions, what you'll find is that those percentages as a fraction of GDP, you probably won't have seen before. And that's because the statistics agency at the end of last year rebased GDP. So... <laughs> GDP, of course, SNA 2008 went up kind of three to five percent in levels. If you're sitting at about quarter, quarter, quarter of your quarter of your GDP being collected in revenue, you get a sizable change. So again, referring to to the kind of the work that has been, you know, the the working the, the working paper 19 that you showed. I mean, in fact, if you look at that percentage, actually, it looks like South Africa fits into the grouping that is called upper middle income countries rather than sub-Saharan in terms of that overall shape. Um, which again, I guess, goes to the point of saying there, in terms of tax, certainly when you actually look at that data, you realize that there really is no average country. Um, all the countries are actually rather different in terms of tax collection. And so again, say if you look at this as a kind of a time series, this, if you're looking at the period here, sorry, these are fiscal years, which are shifted by a quarter relative to the calendar year. Um, you know, you see, as, as you would in um, many countries, you see a decline in actual revenue collected and, of course, a kind of a much bigger effect. Of course, also one of the technical issues in, when in terms of you come to, to kind of looking at data is that, of course, the national counts figures get compiled in terms of an accrual basis and tax agencies, certainly like us, we work on cash. So, you, you know, so you also get, get some sort of anomalies in the data. But that's, that's the kind of big picture. So let's look at a little more deeply in terms of where that revenue comes from. So the major component, sorry, I realized I didn't translate this from South African terms into more international terms. The blue line, the biggest, the biggest component in the country, unfortunately well known for inequality, um, but the biggest component is from income tax on, pers on, on individuals. Um, followed by um, followed by VAT in general, um, and then kind of we saw in the early um, in the in the sort of early 2000s up to the up to the financial crisis, very rapid increase in the growth on um, in corporate income tax, and it still, in fact, has not recovered to the levels that it was pre-crisis. Um, so again, if you're kind of looking at an international comparison, I mean, the tax on, on individuals in it is, is our largest component and looking at kind of sort of the nice country database that we now have, kind of we sort of sit just on the cusp of the bottom sort of quarter in terms of proportions of taxes on individuals to, to, to total tax. Okay, so then a little bit more to look at who actually pays personal income tax, and I'm just going to have to give you sort of a scale. Um, so... South Africa, we're sitting with a population of just over 50 million, uh, working age population just on 34 million. Um, the average number employed, according to our household uh, labor market survey, uh, is about 14 and a half million, very poor labor absorption rate. Um, and of that, there's, there's certain, a certain number of people who employed informally, but if you add formal and agricultural employment, you come to 11. Compare that with taxpayers um, who are actually registered for personal income tax, and we had about 14 million. I need to stop there and say that in a country with with um, with such high inequality, there's obviously a question about 
looking at what you can actually learn about income from uh, from tax returns, because generally, oh, well, I mean, certainly in South Africa, there's a there's a threshold above which you pay tax, and there's an even higher threshold above which you're obliged to make tax returns. So, in terms of your actual tax returns, you're only going to getting be getting the top end. However, the administrative systems have ch uh, have changed, and in fact, we do get um, uh, what are called ta uh, tax certificates, information on any remuneration that is given by a registered employer to anybody. So in fact, close down to uh, about, um, well, and uh, half the people who receive tax certificates, so we have the information, are kind of are below tax threshold in South Africa. So we are starting to actually probe um, the income of anybody who has some sort of association with, with the formal labor market. But if we look at those who actually filed for returns, we're looking at five million um, people. This grew rapidly, in fact, from 1995, um, uh, just, just post-democracy, through to uh, recent figures. Um, and we, yeah, so we're sitting at, at about 5 million. But say, and then there's this, there's this interesting thing, if you kind of dig a little bit deeper, so going into the, into the microdata, I actually took a fixed number rather than a fixed proportion because I'd never seen this before and it looked like a fun thing to do and it was. Um, so we actually just looked at the top 10,000. So that's 10,000 out of 52 million and we actually find um, this is the profile of how their proportion of personal income tax changes over time. So I actually see this steady increase actually much along the lines of taxes on, on companies during that period. Up to the up to the uh, up to the kind of financial crisis, and are tapering off at about seven percent. So ten thousand, uh, the ten thousand top earners, we hope, unless they're people who are evading us entirely. Well, I'm sure there are, um, are actually contributing seven percent of the tax on on individuals. Um, to dig, to dig a bit deeper, of course, this is where one can in principle go in, and I don't have that slide, that still has to be done, in terms of what it really was that drove that rapid increase. Was it in fact things like, uh, was it capital gains? Was it, uh, uh, was it actually income from business? That's something that we need to dig a little deeper. Not everything is done. So again, so you but, you know, as you see, I mean, tax taxes has a very, I mean, tax revenue collected has a very close relationship to how the economy behaves over time. Um, so we saw rapid growth um, in tax as a whole um, and in, in pers and personal income tax um, over the period when there's rapid economic growth. But at the same time, there are a whole lot of other interesting things happening in terms of the tax policy space. So particularly in personal income tax, there was a, there were a whole lot of tax broadening um, uh, uh, policy changes. So tax and capital gains um, was actually introduced only in 2001. Um, and at the same time, various deductions that had been previously allowed were abolished or reduced. So in fact, you really were just getting a, a broadening of, of the tax base as a whole. At the same time, there was actually considerable uh, tax relief provided. Um, the, the marginal tax rate uh, dropped considerably, um, but even so, it was mostly amongst the low earnings that the, that, that, that the tax relief was given. So that also, to some extent, maybe that explains partly the steady increase of the, um, the, higher, the higher earners in terms of their contribution to PIT. The other thing um, that, that, that happened um, in the sort of, well, they, they were, they, it was phased in several ways <coughs> in several stages, but in the very late 80s and the early 90s as a result of um, several tax commissions, um, was that uh, South Africa had had multiple tax rates. I mean, if you go back to the tax tables of the 80s, it was kind of astonishing. You had tax rates for individuals based on race, on marital status, sex, um, yeah, and, and kind of some, some, somewhat inexplicable in places, frankly, I mean, just you know, why. But anyway, those, those were reduced, and in particular, it was actually in 91 that we actually had a change in terms of going to um, the, the last, the, 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 the taxation separately of what used to be referred as married persons, married women, and unmarried persons, okay? That became just a single tax rate. And so it's quite interesting to, to then track, um, of course, you know, a whole lot of other things happened in the country at the same time, but what actually happened to the contribution of female taxpayers 
their taxable income and tax contribution. So you can see in terms of the numbers of taxpayers, in 1991 we were sitting at kind of below 20%. That's actually gone up to 43, 44%. So quite a dramatic change. Um, the taxable income has not grown quite so fast, um, but it, there's also, well, in, in terms, of, I guess it depends where you're looking at it in, in, in absolute relative terms, but I mean, initially taxable income was sitting way below 15%, and it's now kind of a little bit over a third um, of the total. And of course, being a progressive taxation system, the proportion of, of, of tax collected on income is, 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 um, is lower, but is also increased appreciably. And to say this does actually kind of, this is something that you can actually track if one looked, at, I just used the population censuses to look at the proportion of women to, uh, employed to, to total employment, and that actually tracks fairly closely. So it's quite interesting that it's not, that, it, that, that certainly the, the proportion of women within the formal tax system is actually growing at kind of almost the same rate um, as, as in employment. Okay, within, again, kind of splitting, looking at uh, women and men taxpayers, we've also kind of looked at, just looked at how the actual tax that they, um, the, the, the proportion borne by the top 10% and the bottom 40% tracks over time. So you can see amongst women, um, you can deduce that uh, income is actually far more equal than it is amongst men, and in fact, there's been a growth in in, in inequality of income, and hence um, and hence uh, tax. So, in other words, kind of progressively, as you dig a little deeper, you kind of get more and more sort of insights as to what is going on um, uh, in in the country. Okay, and this so then I guess this introduces the topic to to mention, um, which is really a project that we're um, engaged in. Uh, with National Treasury um, and uh, you and you wider is really kind of the instigator, you know, the the um, what what kind of made this happen, and so we have um, provided um, roughly five years of anonymized corporate income tax returns, VAT returns, tax certificates. So these, as I said, I mentioned earlier, these are the details of the kind of the payers you earn for each employee. It does include pensioners as well, and so on. And pr this has been provided to National Treasury. And it's been done um, in such a way that, that the, the, the data can be linked over time and between tax types for the same corporate entity uh, and so on. Although, of course, corporate entities are generally different things for different tax types, but that's uh, another issue. And the data has then been made, been made available to researchers for analysis within a, a secure environment. There's been a call for proposals, and these were evaluated from both a policy and feasibility perspective. And so the current projects you see underway are now various things. Really, actually, oh, sorry, it's also the customs information that we've, that, that's in there. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had projects like this. In terms of looking at, at, a, at a firm level detail from the tax data, um, looking at markups, competitiveness, um, export growth, in versus the intermediate inputs and so on. And of course, then also estimating worker and job flows, which in the context of South Africa with persistent um, high unemployment is obviously a, a subject of a lot of interest. Some of our, I mean, I mean the, the research is in, the research is in progress, but of course there've been a whole lot of learnings about the process. And I think, you know, if we go forward again, we'll, we'll do it better. So the data sets are large, this brings challenges, get about 20 million tax certificates a year. And a lot of researchers, I think, who've been working with this data, used to working with sample survey data, are not actually used to working with these kinds of volumes. Um, of course, we knew this from the start, but it has become abundantly clear that the way data sets are managed for administrative purposes is not, of course, exactly how you'd want them to be managed from an analysis perspective. And linked to that, of course, is the kind of the big vexing issue of metadata. And, in for, and we've been actually having to build as we've gone along. This really is, in some sense, is very much a kind of a, a pioneering project, I think. And uh, one, one begins to realize uh, that tax administration is complex. You kind of get used to it after you've been in it for a while, but it's kind of pretty messy. And there's always kind of devil in the detail. So, you know, in terms of now actually wanting to try and understand even for something like a firm, who, what is a firm, who is an employer from tax data, you know, there's a little bit of thinking that actually needs to be done. But basically from the preliminary work that was done, it was fairly early on established that creating a standard panel data set from the base records 
um, would actually be very useful for researchers in order to enable comparability of independent analyses. So next time round, we'll certainly do a whole lot of these things better. I'm going to gloss over because I've got my red card. Okay, so but just saying that um, uh, ge the geographical component of tax data is also being explored by municipalities who are kind of very interested in, obviously, in, in sub-municipal level economic indicators and so on. So... In conclusion, to say digging deeper and longer, I think the time series, I hope that some of these examples have illustrated how valuable it is to look at data over time, um, actually enables you to track changes in policy, um, economic and, and social policies as well. And there's a lot more that can be done. Um, looking at uh, job level analysis, how income changes with job changes, firm survival analysis, um, a whole lot of other things. And of course, I mean, the one, the one caveat is that uh, Taxpayer confidentiality has to be maintained in this. So that adds a few kind of complexities. But uh, thank you.